Good evening, wonderful people, great dear friends, wherever you are on the face of this very planet. Once again, we welcome you to our live presentation on this glorious platform, this radio, Biafra, on this day, Wednesday, the third day of March, in the year of almost high Elohim, 2021. The time now is exactly three minutes past 7 p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra, three minutes past the top of the hour, regardless of where you are, where you're listening to us from. I welcome each and every one of you, and as I welcome you, please try as much as possible to welcome those around you, because I am not able to come to you live on Facebook, my private page, and my fan page, because Anytime they know there are difficult issues to be dealt with and that I'm going to preach, they look for a reason to suspend my account for even a few more days. That's what they do now on a regular basis. I do not blame them, but my only prayer is that all those people working for Facebook from different ethnic nationalities around the zoo, May Fulani, Jangjaweed, bandits locate you and your family. The day they will find you and your family, you will understand the importance of the work that IPOB is doing. You will then appreciate the enormity of the task regarding awareness that Radio Biafra is here to propagate. It is for your own safety, but some of you will not understand because you are black people and you do not reason very well. But here we are doing all we can to ensure that our people can reason very well. And I'm glad to say that they are beginning to reason well. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you. Not minding the shenanigans of Facebook and their likes, we are transmitting live and direct to the entirety of humanity this very evening, morning, noon or night, depending on where you are, because we are on IPOB community radio. It doesn't cost you anything. We know that some people, or should I say most areas in Nsoka, they are listening to us this very evening in the blessed land of Biafra. We are also on radio Biafra app. We are on tuning. We are on FM. We are on satellite. We are everywhere. And also, we are on Twitter. If you go to Atmazen Namde Kano, you will be able to follow this very event. This very evening, we have come here to preach the gospel of truth, the gospel of enlightenment, the gospel of hope. Because right from the onset, we have remained whiter than white and whiter than snow, unblemished. Unblemished. That is why every endeavor Every venture that we double into, insofar as this restoration is concerned, Chuku Kikabi has always been there to bless us. And things are happening today thanks to the grace of Almighty in our lives, because we are clean and shall continue to be so until Biafra is restored and beyond. My name is Nande Kano. I am the leader of indigenous people of Biafra, the largest mass movement on the face of this very earth. Those who we are born to restore Biafra. Those who do not listen or pay attention to any distractions, they are focused on that very singular objective to restore the kingdom of heaven upon the face of this earth. To bring light where currently, should I say presently, there is a darkness all across the black world. We have come to fulfill the scriptures we have come to fulfill the will of the Father in heaven. We have come to complete that very assignment which our eternal leader started, which is to restore Biafra in our time, in truth and in every honesty. I am the director of radio, Biafra and Biafra Television, and by the very special grace of God Almighty in heaven himself, to put together my premier in a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. We are going to pray, and then after that, we shall discuss, we shall teach, we shall lecture, and also we shall prophesy if the Spirit leads us in that very direction. 
Do not forget your pen and your paper. And for those of you, I know that some of you stream this on Facebook. Stream it right across the entire platform that is Facebook. People have streamed it live on their respective private pages. You can go there to follow and to also read what each other is saying. But we must proceed. But before we do so, we must pray as it is customary for us here to do. And I shall pray in the language of heaven the oldest language on the face of this very earth, the language that Britain doesn't want to hear people speak, the very language that drives away evil spirit, the very language that ensures that you cannot deceive the people. Because you can deceive the people with English language, but you cannot deceive the people with the language of the ancients. We must bow our heads. Onyanye na akpoko tutu yi hiya bare. Onyo obo nanyi aka nyi jiwe hiwe isi. Onyanyi jie mono. Onye sitre soso no oku ono ya. We hazie ono do nke mare dendu ne lo uwa. Onyi nye ni ino kereke na kwisi ala nye. Obo nanyi kambari igwe ne gosi olu wakaya. Obo nanyi kanya wana papa ndo. No one ni rube isi. Obo na nege soso kusu ni le. Nki me li gwe. Nefe. Obo na nege kandi mnuzi. Na jama. Obo na nege kandi yo kenyoru abona no. Na tom ole donala. Obo chini ne. Na sene de nso chineke. Aywe nas na nige bulige lu ni mono duanyi ni ne. Aba nige nyanyo wanyi na gabiga. Haba nega ato matojo nina nkendi yunu. Haba nega ekulo nina. Haba nega nyuku nina. Haba nega ntamu nina. Onye wanye na chine ken na keri nye nina kere ke mwana 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 kere. Hopu na nega kanyine uruberi isi. Na nega kanyine akpoku. Anya debro wani megi. Uwe na ase. Ebo hopu na nega kikeni nina nana badraka nina nkende nso. Bia kwa ki iwe memi landi yunu biafa. Kaho uwe hasi uwe nechira nye chicho ojo. Jakwa nina nke bre dengo zika kansi ya we ba honu le kwa to matu ojo hani ime Kwe ke we la ya chini si hani ime Kwa si we na ima no bo chinketa bo de kwa si bu zhiri na jiri Le kwa na jiri ya madosa ya chine ke na dengo zika Kwa nyo wabla na epe 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 ka na jiri ya we uro funu na nke bre jitendi de tuwa we la hani ime Chine ke na kiwe biko da kiwe bo hoko Bo hoko pe isu nolo hoko Kahara Habo de gende habu Wabla de ndo kochuku Kwa nyo wabla me hono ma kulie we si Na hoka adere na jira na mma. Hoka adere o nyaho na mma de zumi yora na mma. Si tene dike, maro ne dike. Oje den sombe ni ine. Ihu woko mwge si wera na ata anho. Ihu woko mwge opo zade mma na eme. Ihu woko mwge kene zusu. Kanda baro opo nisi. Wera na garande o jowo zi. Wera waron tu mwge wera na achwa aja. Debe nene bigu guna. Lo bochi nketa na abali ya na lansu bo biafaka ya na kukwa hansu Na si biko baki uwe mea na anye bale Le kwa ni detuwa uwe laha ni Bolite muondi ni nebundi ya gule guna nke bale Tinyanyi ya kwa tinyanyi uwe ni me Kandidi ya tuwa abonde potana sonu mwaka kaka adendo na nki uwe Biaki uwe ucha po hani na Kama ni yao kema na foso kwa uwe meni mafa Anye uwe na ajagama uwe neto ya na si biko neze bu bede ngozi Baki uwe rop tra nyuse ebo sonade Na ndi ya ni nebo mwge no wani ina Le pezi nolo nke idongo ita kangi wa hivyo wa IPOB ma gozie. Gozie IPOB nozo puriche. Le kwa ESN ma matere hamano. Uwe ho uu kuna nke bre de ngozi. Uwe ho uu nke bre. Onyi me li kwa adlo kanyi na ajoge. Nini kini teka bwa mwa bwa mwa bwa kibuchina kena kipro mi hini ne bikono. Zopo tandege. Le kwa ESN ma chebe ha. Chebe ezi nolo ndi ezio kuna nime IPOB no wanine. Bundi anyi ne tu mu chine ke ni hino wo mwge ka habu. Ni hino wachi anyi ote yoba hansore ka hana achi ote. O wa hae ka ba anyi ni ine. Nanki igwe. Ni hino nye wanyi na dinde marumbu ibi ki. Bili ka hamsi wede. Anyi wene to yi wene ajaga. Mana gozo yi wene ibuli gila. Na si o kaka. Eze ndi eze. Mbuli elu bulu nke nane ki. Ubuwa marumbu ni nebi ibi ka yana ajogi. Ise. 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 I have just prayed in the language of heaven, the oldest language in the world, 
which some people do not want you to understand, but we know all these things, and it is our duty and responsibility to teach, to lecture this very fact, until we come to the realization that only Biafra can save us. My happiness today is that regardless of what the enemies have been doing, secretly behind, they admire the work that we are doing here on this noble platform. They may come out initially to try to castigate what we are doing, but eventually they go back, they admire, they respect us for what we are doing, and secretly they wish they can be like us. Or some of them, the older if live, who they wish that their children would be like us. But they can never be like us, because before we came, there was none like us. Before we came, there was nobody, no, no entity like us. Now we are here. Yet you can pretend, you can copy all you like. You can never be like us, IPOB. And at the end of the day, when we must have served our purpose on this very earth and gone yonder, those who are still living by then will wish that we live forever. That is the uniqueness of this noble family IPOB that people don't understand. Only people who are in the spirit can see what it means to be a family member of IPOB. Because in the end, we win. At the end of every process, regardless of how you see it, in the end, perhaps bitterness and envy won't allow you to acknowledge it. But deep down, you know that without this IPOB, today the entire South will have been overrun. Some of you will be answering Shuaibu, carrying your Quran to the nearest, um, 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 you know, um, dilapidated building, hastily converted into a mosque. We are your living saviors on this very earth, by the grace of God Almighty in heaven. Without IPOB today, the entire south of Nigeria would have been gone. They will take all of you one after the other. You cannot do nothing about it. So before you go to sleep tonight, if you are in that part of the world where is darkness now, or before bedtime, so to speak, pray for IPOB, pray for Eastern Security Network, and pray for all those piloting the affairs of IPOB, because without IPOB, all of you would have been gone by now. As I wrote earlier before I came live on air, the reason why they have not proscribed any of the full and literal groups that you have tormenting all of you in the zoo is because they are part and parcel of the wider full and agenda to Islamize you, to conquer you, to subjugate you and turn ancestral lands into full and emirates, loyal to Sokoto Caliphate. That has been their game plan from the beginning. Because I, each time we preach this very gospel, I say to some of you who are not given to reading all the time, I ask you please to carry out a very simple experiment. I want you to write to various governments of the world. You can pick maybe one or two governments and write to them and ask them what they think that Nigeria is in terms of religious affiliation. Ask them what sort of country is Nigeria. Is it a Christian country? Is it a, a country of atheists? Is it a country of our enemies? Or is it a country of Islam? They will tell you that it is a country of Islam. That is what they will tell you. That is the impression they have given to them right across the world. No one outside the shores of the damnable zoological republic is aware that Muslims in Nigeria are actually a minority. Not a majority, minority. A significant minority at that. They brought all their killers and rapists and murderers, organized them efficiently under Mietiala. How they are going to enter into your territory is with their cattle. Out of a combination of idiocy and stupidness, so to speak. We allowed them to come into us. And today, everybody is struggling. I want to read out a headline only. Because everything we preach on Radio Biafra is from what they are publishing in Zoo 
the one Nigeria supporting newspapers and media houses. Not from us. Before they say we made it up. And sometimes when you read this very news, you cannot believe what your ears are hearing. And what I find astonishing is that I, I am tired of saying this, but uh, there is something wrong with black people. When I say they say I'm insulting them, I'm not insulting anyone, but there has to be something wrong with you. For supposedly 200 million people, let, let me say 100 and 80 million people, minus the 20 million that I believe are of Fulani descent. They are in a place called Nigeria, where they are controlling you. They are not original to Nigeria to start with. They came from the foothills of the Futajalon. They traveled all the way to the Zoological Republic. They took over your land from you. They took over Hausa land, you learned nothing from it. They started coming. They took Gwari land, nothing. They took the land of the Bachama, they took Birom land, they took part of TV land, everything. They took uh, 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 Kanuri land, nobody said anything. Every land in the zoo they want to occupy. And the funniest thing is that the more they take people's land, the more those who are yet to be conquered are just there looking like people who are hypnotized. Hypnotized out of stupidity and ignorance. That they do nothing about their plight until it is too late. When it is too late now, they start jumping all over the place. Try to rectify it. Something that they themselves cannot do. Everybody in the zoo now is aware, this is according to a Janjaweed publication, Premium Times. We brought in Fulani from Mali, from Sierra Leone, from Senegal, and all that to win 2015 election. Kawu Baraje said. And after rigging the election for them and killing on their behalf, they refused to leave. This tells you two critical things about the Fulani in Nigeria. One, Fulani doesn't have the numbers to fight. That's number one. And number two, number two, they always get other people to do their dirty work for them. Always getting other people to do their dirty work for them. The same way they're using hopos and to do his own dirty work. Using wicked to do it. Using one hotel building idiot, a criminal that calls himself a freedom fighter to do their bidding. Fulani will always use you. They claim they are in the, in the majority, but they had to go and import terrorists from across West Africa in order to rig election. For the now late dead Buhari, that his skeletons are in the hot desert of Saudi Arabia. All of you are aware. And what astonishes me is why is it that black people have this mentality? You sit down there, you sit down there and you do nothing. Absolutely nothing until it is too late. Until you are conquered. God, until you are taken, now you start running all over the place, asking for help from all over the world. Did they start their killings today? The answer is no. Go and read the history of Benue Plateau. Read the history of the Middle Belt. You will see that the subjugation of the majority, the majority indigenous people have been ongoing from day one. Using them, how's that planning? All of you are there watching. Doing nothing. No, if you look, no, no, no. Look at the evil man is there. Look, look at the east. Can't you see them? Biafra. Do you want Biafra to come? That was how they even deceived my Yoruba brothers and sisters. They deceived them completely. Look at as as educated as Yoruba people are. Full and Nenachenama. Kato Rieras deceived them. Telling them that if you fight an evil man, we'll have a better life. Not knowing that they were setting up the Yoruba for conquest. Today they're in Yoruba forest. Sending them on exile. Out of Yoruba land. They are refugees in, 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 um, in Benin Republic. Today they are in Ondo Forest. They have refused to move. They are from abroad. Though. That was why when they said that these people killing all of us are from abroad. They knew what they were saying. Let me have some water. They knew what they were saying. This is Kawu Barajem. This man said he has traced the, he, he traced the origin of the current insecurity in Nigeria to the influx of Fulani. He said it, it is the Premium Times is a Fulani newspaper. Before anybody will accuse us of bias. 
Do you see why Facebook doesn't want me to preach on their platform? They know we have opened the eyes of people. I got information this morning. Those of them saying before, oh, he, he's, a, he's a rabble raza. He's a this, he's a... Today I am getting confirmation. A very important person called me and confessed and said that those who were against her before for supporting me, all of a sudden they are now calling her and telling her how wrong they were. These are the people in Abuja. The so-called, um, you know, the, the real hardened fools in Abuja. Now they are calling and saying, Oh, please, uh, if you see Nam the Khan and the IPOB, you thank them. It's about time we key in, into what they're doing. We are the ones who are the fools. We've been wrong all along. They're the ones who, are, who have been right all these years. They brought in Fulani from across the Sahel to rig elections. All of you, we are watching, you did nothing. They brought in little, little kids from Niger. During the election, they brought in their cousins from the Niger Republic to come into a so-called uh, One Nigeria to come and campaign for them. They brought them from Chad, from from uh, from Niger, everywhere to come and vote from Northern Cameroon. All of you were just there watching as they were eating you up. You were shouting One Nigeria. They were eating you alive. You never knew the the, the idiotic mess you were in. You were busy shouting one Nigeria. Shouting one like a demented idiot. Look at where you are today. Those people they brought into your land, they have refused to go. And there is one thing that, is, that I find baffling. And I want people to consider, to sit down, to think about what I have to say now, please. Think about it very carefully. See, they brought in, by their own admission, they brought in these people from across the Sahel. I am asking them, since they brought them from across the Sahel, can somebody tell me how they came to be, to be in possession of AK-47? But they were very clever, you see, very, very smart, very smart. Britain was advising them. Britain told them that your entry route into the heartland of the South is with your cattle. Don't call them. These are people they brought in for a to rig election for them. After the election, they have decided to settle them down. In order to justify their presence in your forest, they are now telling you that they are headsmen, that they belong to these, that they, they are pastoralists. Under me, yet yala. This is how clever. They think they are clever. They never knew who will come. It's not full and never envisaged. That the likes of Unam the Khan will ever emerge. They never, never in a million years. They thought that he can bribe anybody. He can buy anybody. Offer him a jet. Give him money. Tell him, promise him good life with his family. Anywhere he wants. Promise him a house, mansion, all your wealth. Anything he wants. Give him his money. After all, you can buy any woman. You can buy them. They are very weak. You can buy all of them. <laughs> they depend who we were. That I come from a, a, a line, I wouldn't call it royal, a line of nobility where you have noble men. Noble men that do not sell their conscience. If you knew my father, you would testify to what I'm telling you. Ask those that knew him, they will tell you who he is. Noble people, they do not compromise. Never. And then we came, or should I say, Chiko Kikabi, I'm determined that we should come at this time to save you. Not just to save Igbo people, not just to save Ibibio, not to save Efik alone, not to save a John, not to save Isoko, Urobo, Ishekiri, Igodomigodo. No, 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 not at all. But to set free everybody trapped in the colonial enclave called Nigeria. Because as I told you two days ago, those ruling Nigeria now are not Nigerians. If I thought it's anything like let us let us assume there is something called Nigeria that Britain created. The people in charge now are not Nigerians. They are not indigenous to the land. They do not have a home, they have no home address. If you ask them where is your home address, they don't have. They are nomads. If you don't know the meaning of nomad or nomadic life, go and Google it or look for your dictionary. That was why Jonathan set up nomadic education. 
Nomads means people that wander, wandering people. They, they don't stay in one place. They keep moving all over the place. Abraham in the Bible that begot all of us was a nomad. Until at the time, uh, Elohim said to him, you, you should stop moving about all over the place. You have to stay in one place. But these people are still one of the few primitive tribes in the world moving their, their, their livestock from one place to another. So anywhere a knife comes, is home. I want ethnic nationalities in Nigeria to understand the mess they are in. Some of you have no idea the type of, of the, the state of hopelessness you're in. I am here to remind you of it. And you may not act upon it, but try to tell your children what you've heard on Radio Biafra. So in the future, as, your, as their mother is being raped or their sister abducted, they'll say, oh, daddy, uh, daddy, remember that thing you told us you heard on Radio Biafra? That is why we preach this gospel the way we do. They came from Sierra Leone, from Mali, from Senegal, from Chad, because Fulani in Nigeria hasn't got the numbers to fight. The reason why Southerners have not been attacked in the north, allow me to repeat, the only reason why Southerners have not been attacked in the north is because house are poor, house are peasants. That the Fulanese have ground into the dust. If you want to see poverty, go to Kano. Go to Kano State. You see what is poverty. The, this same downtrodden because Fulani is a specialist in using people. They love to use people. These same people, they have traumatized, traumatized their fathers, their grandfathers, every of their lineage going back six generations or more. The houses have just realized, courtesy of Radio Biafra, that we are no longer going to go out to kill evil people. We cannot do it for you anymore. And the foreigners do not have the numbers to do so. Do you know how they managed to stop tomatoes and onions from coming down these past few days? Because anywhere you have any institution you have Fulani in it, they always aspire to be at the head, to be giving orders and command. So they, they set up checkpoints where the commander of the of the that very detachment is a Fulani person. That's how they're ruling you. If all of us open our eyes tomorrow. To say enough is enough. Full and will be sent packing. I'm not asking for them to be attacked of anybody. To, but they cannot be in our forest. Though. They cannot be in our, no, no, no. God forbid. But they, let them fall. They cannot be in our forest. If we find them there, they are gone. And of course, some of them can testify to the goodness of the Lord. In that regard, if we find you in any forest in the east, you are, you are, you are a goner. As I'm speaking, record what I'm telling you. Record it. Tap it down. And send to any anybody you feel like sending it to. Our people must understand something. Those killing you are from Senegal. They are from Mali. They are from Niger. They are from Sierra Leone. They are from Chad. They came to rig elections. All of you were there when 14, not 14, 14 seven year olds were voting in Canada. You were there. You saw it. You saw all of you saw it. People say, oh, well, why do you speak this way about black? I say, because black people are useless. They never act on that thing that is right. Never. Morally speaking, black people are bankrupt morally. Moral bankruptcy. All of you, including your INEC, including observers from Europe, all of you came down during the elections of, um, was it 2015? You saw kids voting in Kanu State. You came again in 20, was it 2019. You saw people, uh, little, little children voting from Nigeria Republic. Didn't you see them? What did you do? You said, oh, eh, although there was rigging, we, we voted for them. APC, one last slide again. They gave money to newspapers. You see, in Africa, every layer, every layer, of life, or should I say existence, from your doctors to your lawyers, some of them, to your, let's say, say legal practitioners. 
We bring it down to those holding high public offices and those serving beneath them. Have you seen the level of wickedness? Do you know that a doctor who took an oath, uh, according to medical ethics, if you see somebody dying is an emergency, you must treat that very person before asking for money. As long as you have the, the, the necessary materials or tools to treat that person, you must treat them. That is medical ethic. Go, I think it's, it's medicine 101. Go to anywhere and the, the number one thing is to save life. But do you know that a doctor will know that somebody is... I'm, I'm digressing a bit because I want to tell you about the depth of what I call moral bankruptcy in the makeup, in the DNA of black people, why we are in the mess we are in today and why the Fulanese are ruling all of us. Visit us. A doctor will tell you to go and bring deposit. If you don't bring deposit that somebody will die, you think it's a joke, he'll be there. He'll be looking at somebody dying. You know, when I look at doctors in Nigeria, I, I know that, uh, you know, when I say people, people flinch, they say, hey, don't say, I know that the devil must be a black man. See, Satan must be from Africa somewhere. Lucifer. Do you know why I say that? You see a doctor watching somebody die, a pregnant woman that requires cesarean session or operation to bring out the baby. A doctor will tell the family, go and sell your land, I don't care. And the doctor will be watching and the woman will stop breathing. She will die with the baby in her stomach. There is a type of wickedness in the heart of a black man that makes you wonder <laughs> who actually made these people. After many years of considering the way we behave and the way we react, God Almighty formed IPOB and said you can no reason like those people. For me to love you, for you people to have the freedom that I promised you, your job is not to set yourself free. Your job is to liberate the thinking capacity of an average black person all over the world. That is your job. That is the duty of Biafra. That is why I have sent you to come. I don't know if they have stopped you. Know, I think uh, we are back again. I think they stopped me very briefly there, broadcasting on my. That, that's what they keep doing, trying to stop us from doing what Elohim have asked us to do. They have failed, and will continue to fail. Fulani came into our land because of that same thing in a black man. When you see evil happening, you keep quiet. Because the Fulanese came and took over the house and housed themselves, helped them to take over other people's land. Because of that, when it came to Biafra, the only people that can defend all of you, I say without apologies, everybody, it doesn't matter who you are, without Biafra, you are gone. Without Biafra, you are finished. Fulani will take your land from you and kill you in the process. You know what they did? They ganged up against Biafra. They ganged up against anybody trying to speak the truth. They killed the Legiwa. An honest man, the only journalist I know in, in the history of Nigeria, the only journalist I've ever known is the Legiwa. The rest are all rubbish. You can buy it. After a while, you buy them over all of them are all rubbish. Pure bunk of rubbish. Village idiots. The Legiwa stood on the path of the truth. Babangida killed the Legiwa. Everybody knows this. That Babangida today is an elder statesman. People defer to his opinion. But he's a murderer. He is a killer. You know that Babangida is a killer. You know that very well. He killed the Legiwa. Because the Legiwa was exposing all the things they were doing. All the fraud with MPN and Fujiro. All the things, all the evil things. Even Julius Beggar. Nobody will respect that man. He's in heaven, of course. They killed him. The Legua was fighting for a better life for everybody in Nigeria. They killed him. Nigerians did nothing. Nothing. That is part of that punishment that you're suffering now at the hands of these murderers from the Sahel. Do you think that God will forget? People don't think, you know, they go to, they, they go to all these churches and they, 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 they sing. They jump up and down. They don't even actually understand who God is or how God operates, they have no idea. 
<laughs> isn't it isn't it very funny the more churches you build the more mosques you build the more difficult things become have you not noticed it the more churches you have claiming you have medical centers the more difficult things become for you because you are in a period of perdition I told you in 2015 that Somalia will be better than Nigeria I am telling you if you have not applied for your Somalian visa go and apply for it now if you have not applied for your visa to Somalia because Somalia is hello but it's better than it's going to be way better than the zoo because when you people see evil you condone it and that evil has come to you now you are about to you are going to discover as they say you are about to see something you have never seen before they came down to our land they came down to all the way from across the Sahel to rig election in a land that doesn't belong to them Fulani owns no land in Nigeria they own nothing they are visitors they are and don't of you are there just coward just cowardly they are afraid of them oh, don't, don't say something oh please don't say anything oh, if you say something don't say something oh, all of them I'm, I'm just looking at people and laughing at you typical cowardly wretched black people you cannot stand up against people. They don't even have the numbers. They don't have... All they are doing is that they are boasting in the media because they control it. They can give money to a, a useless Yoruba newspaper editor to publish junk and write for them. That's all they rely on. If you scratch the surface, you see that they are nothing. They don't have the numbers. They don't have the strength in depth. They don't have the know-how to defeat all of us once we are united impossible it is impossible to defeat impossible now Yoruba and the Ibo are now together unbreakable the bonds we forged are unbreakable unbreakable the east and the west unbreakable imagine when we add middle belt to it what is going to happen do you think anybody can stop us? They start begging. You know, if it's before, all of you will be done. Bring that food blockade. Bring it on. Let us see. Are they not the ones now crying and saying, eh, our goods are perishing. Let's move food to the south. Who is begging you? Who is begging you? I'm asking. Danger with who is begging you? Four hundred people are not even farmers. You, tell, you see how cunning it, you see they think they're smart. Are they farmers? The only thing that Fulani people do or work every day is to move cattle and to occupy political office. Military, politics, and moving cattle all over the place. Who are they known to be farmers anywhere? If they're farmers, why would Jordan set up a nomadic school for them? Or should I say nomadic schools for them? Why would Jonathan do a thing like that? Why, I ask you? These are some of the very pertinent questions you need to mull over every blessed day to understand the hopelessness of the situation and why you must do something urgently, if not to rescue other people, but to at least rescue your family by reasoning right. Try to reason properly. That's what we're asking you to do. How can you have, should I say, 180 million people to be overrun by people who are not up to 20 million? How, how is that possible? Because all of you are cowards. They get you to fight one another. They raise idiots and traitors amongst you. And you allow them to live. And the more you allow them to live, they become emboldened. They give them some chicken change. They buy houses in Abuja. They are maybe in Lagos. Or they start building hotels here and there. And after a while, they now grow wings. They now think that they are opinion leaders. And they have willing allies in Yoruba media. Willing allies. You know, sometimes I even think that some of these people, you know, they, are, they are possessed. They don't even know what they're doing. I'm telling you, they have no idea what they're doing. They are possessed. Because you cannot, Yoruba land is under occupation. Yoruba forests have, have been taken over by Fulani Janjaweed. Yet you have a Yoruba newspaper editor in Lagos. Yoruba for that matter. Still trying to defend the Fulani presidency in Asorok. You know, you sometimes you, <laughs> I, I struggle to understand. You know, when I pray something, I say to Elohim, are you sure you created these people? 
in your image. They, they said, let's create man. You know, are you sure these black people, they were made in the image? Because I have never seen such levels of stupidity ever before. Yoruba land is under occupation. They have taken over Pasavoyo. They have taken on those states. Yet you have a Yoruba newspaper editor in Punch, in Nation, in um, Tribune, writing in favor of the government that have just taken over their land. Hey! Lord God have mercy. Are you following me? They came from all over the place to take your land and have taken it. You can't do nothing about it unless you support IPOB, unless you support Eastern Security Network. That is your only savior. Your only savior, morning, noon, and night. IPOB will save all of you. That was why it was very, very critical for the foreign. Britain told them, go and prescribe IPOB. Now, do it. They said, no. They said, do it. No, 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 do it now. To stop them from growing. Because their influence is growing. Do you know why they demonized IPOB before all of you and the stupid, idiotic European newspaper editors went along with it? Because that is their game plan. They always divide you. They, they sow seeds of doubt in the minds of people. So that you end up hating those that have come to save you. You know, that's a very subtle thing that, um, you know, Western intelligence use in Africa and it works perfectly well. In Africa, if you are a redeemer in Africa, those you are coming to save will end up hating you. They will hate you because there are some units within Western intelligence across Europe. That is their job. They are job is to make sure that anybody who comes out to save the people that the people he's trying to save will hate him or hate her. That's how we are. And the black people are very, very easy to manipulate. They manipulate them. They start hating those that came to save them. Everybody knew that what Ujuku went to. Every day I talk about Ujuku and Aburi Accord. Everybody knows that Ujuku went to Aburi Accord to go and negotiate for regionalism. For restructuring. The same restructuring they are now begging for. The same restructuring. But when they came back, nobody told Britain never allowed the people to understand what Uduk went for. They said, oh, he's a rebel. He's a rebel. He's a rebel. Today, you are begging for the same thing that Uduk fought for. And over five million Biafrans died for. You are still begging. And you, you want to wait for a fallen man to wake up one morning and say, okay, now... You know, they claim they are northerners. We northerners, we are now satisfied. Come, let us uh, renegotiate Nigeria. Can you imagine such rubbish? What an insult to the entire South and Middle Belt. What an insult. What an insult. A, a few, few, handful, they are not enough to 1,000 people. Determining all of you, and all of you are the ship is one Nigeria, the unity of our country. And I, I have said it anyway. Let me, allow me to repeat. You know, this, the level of stupidity I have seen in black people, believe you me, that was the reason why I said to God in heaven, in my next life, I don't want to be a black person. Because of the level of stupidity I see in an average black person. Now, do you know that today, the news broke, I put, I, I put on my Facebook page, allow me to do that, but not to broadcast. Do you know that today, the, the new president of the, of the United States of America, Joe Biden, called African leaders. They did not call whoever they claim is in Astorok. Because there is nobody there. Absolutely nobody. The foreign affairs was supposed to know that this man is going to make this call. And patch his call through. Nigeria is meant to be the number one to call in Africa. Is that not correct? They called other people. They didn't call the one from Abuja. In Nigeria, and I, I you know, I, I, I said to God that you give human beings, even animals, common sense to be able to use it to reason. Ask yourself, why was it that uh, Biden did not call Abuja to speak to whoever they claim is uh, is Buhari? Because Biden knows that there is no Buhari, but it's not the job of America to tell you that. Everybody knows there is no Buhari. But it's not, even if even if you don't even if you think that there's a Buhari in Asrock, why is it that common things, simple things that a president does, simple common things that a president can do, how come your own is not doing it? 
common simple things that a president is supposed to do how come your own is not doing it they were burying military men that died in an air, in an air crash uh, a few a few meters from asarok and you claim buhari is a military man a general and he's inside asarok he did not attend the funeral all these things are raging school children being kidnapped. Common national broadcast. Common, common national broadcast. They couldn't do. Instead, you have a country where the vice president is missing, and all of you, you know this? And they are telling us that anything that Femi Adeshino says or Gabashe who says considered to be the president talking. Are, are you people that stupid? Are you, no, no, hold on. Are you people that foolish? Uh, uh, does he mean that black people are so useless to the point that they can no longer reason properly? Even even and 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 until even a rat, a rat can reason better. Do you know that ordinary bees and you know bees the, 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 where you get your honey from? Even worse, do you know once the queen becomes very weak and can no longer perform in that role, they kill the queen. They take the queen out throw it away and bring in another person, groom another queen to take over. Because it is called uh, not fit for purpose. You have a president, so you claim them. The person cannot fulfill the duties and functions of a president. Why then do you still have that person in power? Because there is nobody in power. What Fonani did cleverly is this. They used, they dangled the promise of presidency in front of Tinubu. And the black, we black African people, being who we are, insatiable and greedy, devoid of honor, that kept it hook, line, and sinker. Because of the promise of 2023 presidency, please do, do not announce that Buhari is no more. They went into their blood contract, they signed it. That is why EFCC can chase Tinubu and Tinubu can no longer talk. Because he is part of the plot. And when you tell them that Fulani can never love them, they say, oh, that we are Muslim, I'm Tinubu, I'm a Muslim, they will love me. What happened to Abiola? Because you people don't know history. You don't have regard for history. Abiola was a Muslim, a very popular Yoruba politician, a successful businessman. They did not give it to him. What makes you to think they will give it to Tinubu? Are you people insane? Can't you reason very well? Oh dear me. Now EFCC is looking for him. <laughs> They're looking for him. <laughs> he is in one almighty mess. Another one gone. After using him and his TV station and his e rats and his newspapers to demonize IPOB. Can you imagine what could have happened had the Yoruba people risen up, Yoruba media, to say when IPOB was proscribed? or that kangaroo judgment delivered, had uh, Yoruban newspapers got up to say, no, this is wrong. Do you think today they'll be flying in their forest? A simple question. The time that all these conspiracies were going on against IPOB, had Yoruba, Yoruba media said, what you are doing to IPOB is wrong. They have not killed anyone. They did nothing wrong. Those with AK-47, why don't you prescribe them? Had they consistently made that very argument, uh, they wouldn't have prescribed IPOB. And with that, Flane cannot be in their land. But because they failed to do that which is right, that is why today their young people are fighting very bravely to rid their land of Fulani people. Because those people in the middle belt, they kept quiet. They told them, you man, is your problem. Jaffa is your problem. They want to succeed. They want to divide. They want to, uh, to dismember Nigeria. You believe their lies. Yes. Today, that is your village. What is your faith today? You believe in all the nonsense they were feeding you. So today, where are you? Where is your village? They felt Benjamin the same garbage. Ojuku is your problem. He, it was Benjamin that killed the rose. An evil man. Where is his village today? He's the one now screaming and shouting. Defend yourself. <laughs> oh dear me. I don't know when this people will have acquired some sense. But we are preaching the gospel of heaven. They came from all over the place. And to make matters worse. You know, you know the, Nigeria is a very funny place. And Nigerians are the one of the funniest people on this earth. 
and I, I categorize them as one of the most foolish people to have ever existed. You know, colonialism, imperialism, and um, and um, even neocolonialism have done a lot of damage to black people. But the damage that it did to the brain of a, an average Nigerian is worse. An average Nigerian cannot reason like a human being. All of them. I think I, every time I come on air, I say this. Once you say I am a Nigerian, I write you off as a human being. You are an animal to me. And I have my reasons. And this, here's one of them. Do you know who is the presidency? It, let, let me now make it sound very uh, uh, childish. I still find a not risk you. Let us start from kindergarten. Because people no longer listen very well in the zoo. I don't know if it's hardship, I don't know what it is. In Nigeria, people know people don't reason like human beings. They reason like animals. Even animals are better than them. And I'll tell you the reason why. Me I can go to get a big at her. Once I push you, I'll show you where I'm going to fall. Let me tell you. Do you know presidency is is an asset. presidency is the is the group of people, in this case the cabal, running Nigeria. They call themselves presidency. They have now come out today, when did this news break? The news broke today, Mark the Third. They have come out today to confirm the 2017 report of helicopters supplying arms to headsmen in Delta State. They use helicopters to supply arms to headsmen in Kaduna State, courtesy of the governor of the state, El Rufai and Guratai in the army. The same thing they did to in 2017 to Delta. Do you know today that there is no fly zone? People, I don't know if you need, are people actually following the news? Do you know that today that this same presidency announced that there is no fly zone in Zamfara? Do you know why? That they are using aircraft to bring to supply arms to Fulani bandits. Hey, I don't, I can't, I, maybe English is not enough to explain this. I don't know what to do. But let me read it for you. As a rock, the, pres the Fulani presidency may have unwittingly confirmed a 2017 allegation that helicopters were being used to ferry arms to Fulani headsmen. Fulani, you know, all of, all of you know it. That is what, it, do you know what pains me the most? Whoever is the news editor in, uh, in channels television, they know this. AIT, they are aware. Everybody, you know all of these things. Then why are you trying to defend what is indefensible? How can you defend one Nigeria when a group, when a presidency, the president himself, have marked all of you out for destruction of those running the zoo in his name because the idiot is dead? If you doubt me, then ask Biden why he didn't call he didn't call uh, 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 Buhari then because the the uh, my parents are dead. Am I going to call them on the phone? I still have my mother's and um, my father's number on my phone. I've not deleted them. They're still there. Although I have them, am I going to call my mom and my dad? It's not possible. Because I know they won't answer. The living don't call the dead. That's why Bari did not call for any Buhari. A so-called giant of Africa. Are, are you people not paying attention? Are you not does it mean that you don't listen or you don't reason or you don't... You, or, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you people? I ask you. This same behavior you're putting up now is the reason why Fulani killers are in your voice. But why you cannot understand that is beyond me. This same attitude, this same non chant this same attitude of, oh, he, he, the way he's talking to us, you don't like this. But okay, maybe you like the way that the Fulani are raping your, your people in the, in the bush. Or how they took over your land. Do you like that one? Do you love it? A very simple question. The time now is 10 minutes to the top of the hour. Whatever you are. It's a live presentation. I am preaching the gospel of heaven. Even any wisdom was in the Heaven will give me a message and I pass to the living. That's my job. Heaven will give me a message and it is my duty and responsibility to pass that to those who are living. Now listen. A statement came from Asorok. By Malam Garabashehu, the new president of Nigeria, him and uh, and uh, uh, Femi Adesino, they're now sharing it, which means that their, their, their end has come. Their end has come. The senior special assistant to President Muhammad Buhari on media publicity said 
There was strong suspicion that choppers were being used to ferry arms to full any bandits in Zafra State. Choppers, where did they get the military aircraft from? So does it mean that the, the radars are not working in the north? I'm saying this for the benefit of Yoruba media uh, uh, practitioners, especially channels. Punch newspaper, not the rest of them. You people, you are directly, I'm going to say, you people, you are directly responsible for the mayhem that the Flanners have brought upon everybody in this room. You are pursuing money. Because they were giving, APC was giving money to, to John Momo. He's dead now. All of you, your guy will tell you, hey, if you don't support them now, how are you going to get your salary? Let me ask Channel Television something. You people think we are stupid, don't you? <laughs> Channel TV. Every, every viable news network in the world survives with advertisement. How many of you has ever seen Channel TV advertise consistently? If you watch CNN now, after every 15 minutes, at least 13 minutes, you see adverts. People are paying for it. NBC the same thing, ABC the same thing, Fox News the same, everywhere, Newsmax the same. They survive on advertising. BBC that doesn't do advertising, they survive by, by taking money tax from, from TV license payers in the UK. And grant from the, I think it's the overseas, I think it's the, from the culture minister, culture, whatever, I don't, I'm, not, I'm no longer sure. Have you seen any adverts? How many times have you seen adverts on Channel TV? How much did they get from adverts? Now, the question is this. Where do they get their money from to pay their staff and to keep the station going? They get it from the government. That's the only way to do it. There are no license fee payers in Nigeria. People don't pay TV license in Nigeria. People are not, are not advertising. So where do you get your money from? Before that, PDP was funding AIT. Now, APC is funding China Television. That's why you only have two major TV stations in the zoo, essentially. The rest is, uh, is on contract. If you have something to say, you pay them and they stream it for you. You have a wedding, you pay them money, they come, they stream it live. Where does China TV get their money from? From the government. So they must always tell the government line. And these are journalists. We are led to believe. Do you see how your problems are multiplying in the zoo? Even those you are relying upon to save you cannot save you. You run to your pastor, and your pastor is more interested in building the next 10 million capacity auditorium. What is happening to you? He doesn't want to know. How many of your pastors have spoken against the occupation of our forests by these aliens from the Sahel? How many, I ask you, how many? I'm sure on Sunday you go and pay your tithes and your and your offering. Garuba Shehu, senior special assistant to Muhammad Buhari, who is now dead, of course, said that they are using army helicopters to bring arms to bandits. Full and controlled army, supplying arms and equipment to full and bandits from across the Sahel. And you're still talking about one Nigeria, as if your your brain is not correct. <laughs> Maybe you know you know sometimes. I, you know, to be honest with you, so, some days I, I get so upset that I, I want to say to Elohim, allow me to ask IPOB to go to sleep. Dissolve ESN. Say to IPOB, no more activities, no more agitation, go arrest for two years. So that Fulani can come and, and reduce you with some of, some of our people who are so foolish. If not for IPOB, there will be no Nigeria. Will, what you have today is Islamic Republic of Nigeria. Islamic. They will write it there. Nothing will happen. It's all that I've been holding the fort. Holding the line. And what did they do? They connived with, with the same people we are fighting to save. To prescribe IPOB. Illegally, of course. Do you know that today they went to court to discuss the prescription, the prescription of IPOB? Our case that appeal court. For how many years now? 2017, 14, sorry, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, nearly four years in a country that wants to be regarded or taken seriously as a nation. For four years, somebody did you wrong, you went to court. 
and you've now gone to appeal to appeal a legal decision that criminalized an entire nation for four years they've not had the case do you know what happened today i never knew the case was coming up today so this morning of course as, you, as always i was led in the spirit and i decided to write about the prescription of ipob using an old newspaper headline from authority that the fact that IPOB activities are not unlawful, are not unlawful, yes. Do you know what happened in Abuja today? Today was the day they were meant to hear the case of the prescription of IPOB and tagging us a terrorist group in Abuja, Federal Appeal Court of Nigeria in Abuja, today. And what happened? As soon as they read that very publication I made, but I think I did it on both on Facebook and on Twitter, Everybody ran away from the court today. Go and ask if you have any lawyer in Abuja. Ask them. They all ran away. The court did not sit again today because they were hiding it. You know, before when they want to call my case, they say, oh, we have 100 witnesses willing to testify. Because they know that the tagging of IPOB as a terrorist organization is flawed, both before man and God, even in their zoo laws. They, they they were hiding it. I don't know what told me. I don't know. Something just I said them and I wrote it and they ran away from the court. No, the appeal court of Nigeria did not sit today in Abuja because there was an IPOB file in the case in the, in the docs that were meant to be listened or heard today. This is how powerful we are. Because because the judges they, they assembled seven of them, they have gone through the files. The ones they saw IPOB versus federal government of Nigeria, they dropped it. They said the court is now dismissed. Everybody should go home. Ask some, ask some senior advocates in Abuja today. Do, 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 those that went to appeal court, did appeal court sit today or not? Did they, you know, normally when a court is not going to sit, somebody will come out and announce um, that they, is it the, the registrar or the clerk or whoever will announce that the reason why the court won't sit. They just told them everyone to run away. That IPOB file is here in the court. Ask everybody that went to appeal court today in Abuja, Wednesday, the third of March. What happened? Were you given any reason why you had to run away from the court? They will tell you no. For the first time in the history of the zoo. That's how powerful we are. That is the reason why they don't want to bring that very case to come up to appeal. Because they know you cannot prescribe people asking for a referendum is not possible. They know that during the argument, people will ask, perhaps one or two media houses will carry it, and people will ask, why have you not proscribed Miyeti Allah and Fulani killers? They hastily, they didn't even adjourn it. They said that everyone should go away, and they all ran away from the court. That is how powerful we are. And that is to tell you that what Elohim is doing in our lives. God brought IPOB to save all of you. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're Robo, you're Yoruba, you're TV, you're Kanuri, you're Nupe, Jukun. It doesn't matter who you are. Bachama, it doesn't matter who you are. Biron, it doesn't matter who you are. IPOB came to save all of you. But I may, I may disagree with his style. What are that? Oh, you want the style of a Fulani headsman ripping your mother? Is that the style you, you like? Here you have your presidency. Here you have people that claim that they want one Nigeria, confirming what we've always known, that Nigerian army, the foreign army generals you have in the army are the ones supplying weapons to terrorists to come and kill you and rape your mothers. And you're standing up and saying, you are one. IPOB is your problem. <laughs> I saw that, that useless daily trust newspaper in the north. That Janja with publication, writing rubbish. Writing rubbish about IPOB. But when it comes to, you see how evil they are. When I say that black people are satanic, I know. You see, when it comes to IPOB, they say IPOB attack police station. IPOB killed two policemen. IPOB killed four army officers. Not allegedly. But before our eyes, you will see army come and kill people. They will say allegedly. Black people are evil. Though. God knows in this show, you, you people are very wicked. A very wicked and soulless race. Very wicked. The same daily force we say allegedly in broad daylight the army came to my house to kill me on the 14th of September 2017 as a result of which my mom and my dad are dead today. 
the whole world saw it. It's on video. You know, they wrote allegedly. The army, we are alleged. But because they want to demolish full army, they came with a game plan, them and their British masters, including Obasanjo. Obasanjo is part of the government of Nigeria. Obasanjo belongs to the Obuni fraternity, or should I say Grand Lodge, that is affiliated to the Freemasonry, um, 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 not Scottish Rites, the Freemasonry you have in England. Obuni. That is why in the East we don't belong to groups. Ndiyot, we call them. We don't belong to secret societies. There is none. Forget about Okonko is a passage of right. Okonko is a passage of right. Once you, it's like a bamispa. Once you have grown to the age of 13, a guy that is Okonko, you enter Okonko, you enter one of the fraternities. And then you form age grade from there. That's how it's done. Obasanjo, the reason why they trust him is because he is a member of Obuni Fraternity, of course, the Grand Lodge, they call them, that is affiliated to the Freemasonry. The Fraternity in England. Go and do your research. So they trust him. England can trust him. Britain trusts him because he is their loyal slave. Obuni Fraternity and Grand Lodge, they answer to to um, the, 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 the Freemasons of England. Are you following me very carefully? Now, if were Obasanjo, if Obasanjo were to come today to say that I don't want Nigeria to exist anymore, Obasanjo has the same, should I say, clout and influence that Azikiwe enjoyed prior to independence of Nigeria. Were Obasanjo today to write and say Nigeria is dying we don't want it to continue anymore. They will dissolve Nigeria because they trust him. And some of you must know that it was Obasanjo who brought SARS to Nigeria. Some of you don't know that. It was Obasanjo that brought SARS, Special anti robbery Squad. The reason why Obasanjo brought SARS into Nigeria was because in Britain then, there was a shortage of um, organs for transplant. The reason why SARS was created was ostensibly to harvest organs to send to Europe for those who are in need. Liver, kidney, pancreas, just name it. That was why Britain funded SARS. Because then in the UK, they kept complaining, we don't have much, we don't have organs here. We don't have, oh, how the waiting list, it's called a, a, the waiting list for people waiting for organ transplant ones, growing and growing and growing. It was Britain that set up SARS. Their job is to harvest organs and send abroad to sell. Obasanjo was the one that made it possible. There are some things that you people don't know about these. Some things, you know, when I look at, that's why I want to look at an average ignorant Nigerian with his degrees. Or should I say degrees in idiocy. I feel sorry for you. You know nothing. Who brought SARS into Nigeria? Special anti robbery Squad. Who brought it into Nigeria? Why is it that every year they kill, they harvest organs and they move? The same thing that they're doing at Iboko Police Station in a, in, in a boy state. It's called Idoko. Idoko is called Idoko Police Station in a boy state. Why didn't the police come and arrest somebody and take them away and nothing will happen? They took our women to court. Was it two days ago? Did you see it in any paper anywhere? Did any Nigerian Israel or even NTA or anybody go to report? That thing we've been saying that they kidnapped our women and we are raping them. Two days ago they brought them to court. Did anybody go to court to find out if what we've been saying is real or not? But they came to court and they were granted bail. Black people, you people are something else. This no wonder in anywhere in the world you see black people, they are the lowest of the low. You know, for very many years I kept asking God that why, why, why? Elohim said to me, one day you'll find out. And I found out myself that the wickedness of a black man is second to none in the animal kingdom. The most wicked race on earth is we black people. Very wicked and without conscience. We, we are lamenting and complaining about our women who were being raped. Some of you said it's a lie. But they took them to court two days ago. The same women they took them to court two days ago. Federal High Court in Abuja. Oh, sorry. The Wusel Zone 2 or whatever rubbish is called. They gave them bail. They came to court in chains. I'm 
Amnesty International is aware. They never wrote any report. Human Rights Watch, they are aware. They never wrote any report. All the newspapers, we contacted all of them, they never came to court. Even to do their job is very difficult. That is why Elohim is punishing all of you with felony killers and murderers. Because your wickedness is too much. Your wickedness and hypocrisy is too much. Fulani brought in their people from across the Sahel, put them in our land and equipping them. When we told you, you said, no, it's a lie, it's propaganda, it's incendiary. Look at NBC saying they will homework <laughs> or teacher cockroaches saying they will, they will block Radio Biafra. If people who are sensible were not able to do that, it is a bunch of corrupt idiots in Abuja. They said it's incendiary. He's a, he's a whipping up ethnic sentiment. But your presidency, Garaba Shehu, has just confirmed what I've been saying for years. That the Nigerian army have been supplying Fulani terrorists for some time now. That is why in Zamfara, there is a no-fly zone. Before you bring arms to terrorists with a helicopter, there must be a heavy-duty aircraft that must have brought it in the first place where the helicopter got those equipment from. So who brought those arms into Nigeria? Who contracted or who hired a helicopter to be flying them to... How come they don't even know where they are? Yet they come to Olu to bomb Olu. And some of the who are busy hailing, hailing people coming to kick. Oh dear. Sometimes I don't... I feel like not preaching, to be honest with you. I say, let the will of the Almighty be done because we are, we are honestly speaking, uh, something is wrong with us. Something is wrong with us. It's very, very terrible indeed. The helicopters are everywhere. Garaba Shehu told BBC Hausa that a no fly zone was imposed on Zafra because of reports that jets, jets are used to ferry arms to bandits. So, bandits, you claim. They are hungry. They are not kidding. How come they negotiated arms deal all over the world? They hired an aircraft to come and drop the weapons for them. And all of you say, uh, we Nigerians, tomorrow morning I hear them, we Nigerians, we are in Nigeria together, the unity of our country and the patriots. <laughs> anyway, whom the gods want to destroy, they first make them mad. <laughs> Nigerians are mad. And that is why from the people in your forest killing you. People are so hopeless. So idiotic. So foolish. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't know what Luga did to some of you, to did to the brains of your parents, because um, I put it, I don't know, uh, to, honestly speking, once you're in Nigeria, I don't, see, I don't see you as a human being. I'm being honest with you. I do not see you as a human being. And that is why I commend those soldiers who are leaving the zoo. How can, see, sometimes I wonder, how can you come from the mid middle belt and you're in the army? From the east, you are, you are in the army. From the west, you are in the army. The same army that instead of getting these bandits they brought from Sierra Leone, from Mali, from all sources to go and fight Boko Haram, they use you to go and fight Boko Haram. And after fighting them, the same Nigeria you claim you are serving, some of their idiots like Sheikh Gumi, will call, should I say, our back and Gumi, not, she's not a Sheikh, only, only an Arab man can be a Sheikh. Um, Baka Gumi will come out and say, um, my dear brothers, my dear bandit brothers, uh, people you should be upset with is the Christian soldiers killing you with Nigerian army uniform. These are people serving a supposedly their nation. Somebody endorsed by the presidency because Lai Muhammad said that he is in support of what Sheikh Gumi is saying. So that means that Lai Muhammad is in support of Sheikh Gumi. I keep calling him Sheikh. Is that dirty, filthy looking thing? Is that, is, what Lai Muhammad said is that I support what Abu Bakr Gumi is doing with the bandits. Which means that the federal government of Nigeria is in support of uh, Abu Bakr Gumi, in the, the new minister for, for banditry. And kidnapping. And this same representative of Nigerian government said that it is Christian soldiers killing Muslims. And you are still wearing the army uniform of Nigeria. And you are fighting who? Who are you fighting? Why can't all of you leave tomorrow morning? What are you doing there? 
That is the reason I keep castigating black people. Are you that foolish that you cannot reason? You are in, in, in Sambisa forest fighting. Your village, your ancestral forest is being occupied by the same people they claim that you're fighting. Are you normal? Is your brain okay at all? Everybody must leave the army and the police. If you stay there, you will die. Especially those in Black Island, you will die. God knows you will die. I'm telling you the truth. You will, uh, I said it before. You will kill us. Many years you will kill us. Then after that, we will kill you. And then shortly after that, Biafra will come. I've been saying it from day one. They will kill us. We will kill them. In the end, Biafra will come. Without apologies, no idiot. I'm not apologizing. Remember when they used to kill us? We will, will come and be writing a long gram. I, I, of course, myself, one of them. We are placing the world on notice for many years. After a while, when you write a shot straight away, is it not that IPOB, that uh, toothless bulldog, they just straight away? And we kept, you know, we went into prayer and fasting. And we kept saying to the dead, please avenge your death. We pray to Elohim. Of course, we cannot pray to the spirit of the dead. It's not good. It's idolatry. We, we kept saying to Elohim, avenge you. You are a God of vengeance. Avenge your children. Fight our battles for us. We, we, as we were praying and fasting and asking God to fight our battles, from now we are unknown gunmen, Kemo. We don't know who they are. Like as if they are angels from heaven. And they are not fighting our battles for us. You see, all those policemen and women and army that killed our people, we don't know where these angels came from. They are called unknown gunmen. Eh? They are doing a very marvelous job now, avenging the death of their people. They want the police and the army to understand when you lose somebody, how painful it is. Because if you leave them, they will massacre everybody. They will kill. They have no soul. Nigeria army, Nigeria police, they have no soul. These are Fulani. They are led by Fulani that they have no soul. They are evil to the core, to the bottom of You know, he's a miracle walking God. I don't know where he sent the unknown government. I don't know. The, the, uh, people name them unknown government. That, that's how we know them by. And uh, believe me, they're doing a very marvelous job. And I will pray more, I will fast more for many more to come. These people, they go to any, they slaughter you with a right letter. <laughs> they will, in fact, once the letter comes to put in the, in the dustbin, we said, okay, is that how it's done? Okay. We went, we went into prayer and fasting. We kept praying until, should I say, God answered our prayers with an unknown man. We don't know who they are, but I believe they are angels from heaven. They are the armies of heaven. And they are now the ones avenging for us. So all those police stations that they used to torture people and kill people and harvest their organs, uh, please, uh, unknown government, find them all. Look for them and find them. Find all those police stations. If you know you are a police officer, you are involved in organ harvesting, people will disappear. Oh, things have happened. Though. People just disappear. Parents will know where the children are. You hear mothers lamenting as they are dying. They are saying, oh, we are the Chibuzo. Mom, have you seen Chibuzo? You don't know that sars have killed Chibuzo. The woman will be lamenting until she passes from unconsciousness into, into death. Thinking about the son. Sometimes only son. Killed by the police. And now God answered uh, the prayers of people. I don't, I don't know where this is unknown government. I don't know where they are from. But at least if they are keeping the police busy, the police will have to be killing innocent people. Arresting the what I they go, they arrest innocent people. They hey, oh Nigeria shouldn't exist. I hate Nigeria with a passion. Shouldn't exist, honestly speaking. Only a fool will support one Jew. Damnable zoological republic. <laughs> Soldiers are living. And they are taking them to court. The Nigerian army has ordered the immediate arrest of officers accused of deserting their post. Can you imagine just such rubbish? You go behind the back, you keep Boko Haram to fight people. And when people who have now discovered, suddenly they have now discovered that they have been the fool for years. They have left your useless army. They are saying, go and arrest them. I don't talk to God. Uh, oh my goodness. Zoo, Zoological Republic. Damnable Zoological Republic. Military documents obtained 
by various newspapers have now listed 101 names, ranks, and, and bank details of Iran soldiers. Every soldier should leave. Go and join the Eastern Security Network. Go and join them. They are the future. If you don't know how an army is supposed to behave, go and look at the Russian Revolution. I think of 1989 or 1990 or 91, I don't know. When Boris Yeltsin came into power. The, the apparatchiks of the, the old guard of the Communist Party in Soviet Union ordered the tanks and armor personnel carriers onto the streets of Moscow to go and kill people. When the army got there, they looked at their fellow citizens They said, we cannot open fire on these people. That is how a patriotic army behaves in the zoo. They bring in wild Fulani beasts. Animal, wild beasts. Give them AK-47 and they open fire. All of you saw the video of live shooting. It's like a, it's like a turkey shoot in Abuja of this, this, this same army slaughtering innocent Shia protesters. All of you saw the video. That video did not make it onto any major news network around the world. That was the day I became afraid of what Britain was doing. The video is everywhere. In any other country or any other country of the world, there would have been an uproar. But in the zoo, nothing happened. Nothing you can kill. You know about the years. Army will come. Uh, bloody civilian. They open fire. Uh, not anymore. We now have God in his infinite mercy have sent us guardian angels. They are known as unknown, unknown gunmen. They are the ones defending us now. We don't know who they are. And they are the ones defending the people. They are unknown gunmen. We don't know who they are. And may God bless them. Because as they are keeping the police and the army busy, they won't have time to kill innocent civilians. They cannot. Because if you kill and go back to your barracks, uh, these angels will come. On, they, are known, they are called unknown gunmen. They will come and they will avenge the death of the innocent. You can never go scot-free. It doesn't matter where you run to, you can never go scot-free. This, your nonsense in the zoo has been going on for years. You have the temerity to give Mietiel a hundred billion. Mietiel will use and buy weapons abroad. You fly in with a jet. You distribute with a helicopter. And you come and tell us about one Nigeria. As if we are full. Are we that daft? Are we that stupid? Mad people everywhere. The zoo. Take that from nonsense to people building hotels, not to us. Is if when you have ethnic considerations, you're looking for money, you are raised in power. You know, poverty is a, is a disease. When you're raised in abject for oh, no, no, no. when you're raised in abject poverty, you see other kids play with toys, you have no access to toys. You'll be wondering, one day, I will get a toy. It happened to me. I'll tell you what happened to me when I was young. As an, as an analogy, so you understand me. Every time we we'll say to I will say to, to my mom that um, we have watched on, on TV that after eating uh, you must have uh, maybe ice cream or sweets. You must have ice cream or sweets to try and uh, you know to make the food to digest. My mother will say to me that um, if you keep eating ice cream or sweets all the time, it will affect your teeth. Your teeth will be brown. It will decay. It will fall off. We kept saying no, that we must have it. I said, okay, if that is the case, during children's day, you will see. So during children's day, I, I will go to, to, to my mom to get, of course, they used to give us money in those days to go for children's day. I, um, they are useless during Independence Day and children's day. And then we'll go and do a matching at the stadium in town. And uh, that matching, you will see fan ice cream, Mako ice cream, they will come. That day I said, since my mom will not give me ice cream in the house after eating, I'm going to eat as much ice cream as possible today. I sat and I ate so much ice cream, I came back and became sick. And my mom asked me the reason why I, I am sick. And I said it is because I was eating ice cream during Children's Day. That is the exact behavior of Obunyo to very poor. Once you're raised in poverty, you did not stay in a decent house, never watched any television. You want to acquire buildings. You want to acquire earthly properties. You think that driving in a very big car somehow confers upon you um, some degree of importance. You think that by maybe building, building hotels somehow makes you a very wealthy man. You want to accumulate chieftaincy titles. You want to spread your hand. You start your cloth. Even if you are as tiny as one's up. You start your cloth and you're moving about as a wealthy man. You want to be regarded as somebody. As they say, 
form is temporary, but class is permanent. If you have class, you have it. You don't need to struggle. People see you and they know you have class. That's one thing that is wrong with most of you in the zoo. Primitive accumulation of wealth. You think that by stealing money, accumulating money, somehow you become important. That is why you have no soul and you have no conscience. That is why in Imo State they can bring somebody from number four to number one. That is why a Supreme Court in a land can appoint somebody fraudulently in the open. And we allow that idiot to remain in office. That tells you all you need to know about the zoo and why we must fight. And please, when you, before you go to bed tonight, after praying for IPOB and for ESN, also pray for unknown gunmen. Uh, pray for them, please. It is very, very important. They are the ones avenging the death. You know all those people killed during NSARS? All those you are torturing and oh, cut open their stomach. All the wickedness and brutality of army and police. That is now a group of dark angels, avengers. They have come. They are called unknown gunmen. Every police station involved in the torture and killing of people, I am praying, please, unknown gunmen, look at them, that they may know how painful it is. As the Bible made us to understand, as you have made women childless, so shall I make your mother childless amongst women. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. The dragon flag has been raised. When we raised it, they said, Oh, yeah, yeah nothing is going to happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's gone now. It has come. There's no going back. They better give us their frau. If you know those idiots, tell you know they are foolish. They are foolish by nature. They are very stubborn. If you know them, ask them to give us their frau, else they are finished. But thank you, write your letter. Tell your Oboni friends and your, your Freemason friends in England to give us their frau. Because I am a child of heaven. Nothing any mortal can do. My mission is the work I'm doing now. Nothing more, nothing less. Elohim determined it. Two, they said in two months, IPOB and others fingered in killing 62 policemen in 15 states. You see how they put IPOB as first. All of a sudden. <laughs> Full and in newspaper, that is what they do. Full and in. Britain, British High Commissioner will tell them, write it. And then she'll cut it out and put it in her dispatch. To, to London to say, can you see what IPOB is doing? <laughs> they think they're foolish. All of a sudden, in all the years you were killing innocent people, you, you, you thought that nothing would happen to you. Is that what you're thinking? Apply for your Somalia visa now that you still have time, that there is road transport. Apply for your Somalia visa. Because very soon, even that very embassy will stop issuing visas to criminal animals from the zoo. And uh, you know, as we keep praying all the time, and all of you must pray, that that hand with which they have used to feed poison to other people must also enter their mouth. I can report today that in bandits also have struck Fulani, have also kidnapped their own fellow Fulani somewhere in Sokoto. Those who are surprised don't know what is coming, as somebody quite uh, um, uh, said today. And I want to commend, I don't know if it's a good thing, I'm not going to commend anybody now. We commend them now tomorrow. They, start, they give them money, they start talking about this. Promise their child or their grandchild a uh, minister of state. Because I heard that some traditional rulers in Anambra, they rose, up, they rose up and they said something, they said something meaningful for the very first time in their lives. And um, I don't want to mention any names. No, no. Try to to um, um, commend anybody because once you do now tomorrow now. Oh, uh, how about that, your son? Uh, I, I think he's a graduate for for the past fifteen years, no job. We want to make him uh, 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 permanent secretary at the Ministry of um, of Revenue or is it in, in, Internal Revenue? Before you know it, the same man that was saying something decent to come out has started complete rubbish. So I'm not going to commend anybody, please. I'm not going to comment any words. Uh, those that spoke and spoke very eloquently, uh, they did well. I am sure they will continue to do well. If you do not know, ESN, as was written by somebody, is a vulture. Who did it? ESN is like a vulture. Let me tell you one thing about vultures that you don't know. It has no friend, it has no enemy. That's number one. And you know that the way that people, before childbirth, people are in pain, in labor. Sometimes uh, you give birth 
uh, and uh, the baby dies. Let me tell you what the vulture said. The vulture said, left or right, uh, I don't mind. If my wife gives birth uh, to a healthy baby vulture, <laughs> I don't know what they call them, baby vulture, I will celebrate because I now have uh, a child. But should my wife die in the process with the baby, uh, then it is also food for me. I want you to think very deeply. Those of you in the zoo, army and police, those of you Janja with the Fulani people that came from Futajalon into Sokoto and into Hausa lands and now running the zoo, I want you to think very deeply. As they say, where we come from, all work are You see, Vulture. They asked the Vulture how he's feeling about the impending birth of the child. And the Vulture said, if the child survives, it's good because I have a child. But should that child die, it's also good because now I have a meal. Think very deeply. That era of coming and killing people and going, going away, is, <laughs> it has come and gone. Okay, bye bye. We now, we now have people that fight for us. We want people that speak the truth always because we are no longer going to write any letter to anybody when they kill us. If you kill us, we'll kill you. The rest of you, it may take time, maybe a few weeks. That same person will find you and you will die. Check up, oh, oh, come. You think uh, we will continue lamenting? Is that what you think? Uh, every time we lament, we write letter, nothing happens. You think we are fools? You must be dreaming. You must be dreaming. You must be dreaming. If you do not know, they are finalizing their deal to, to build railway from uh, Katsina to Maradi. Katsina, Maradi rail line. They have taken loan from China to build it. But the people that are going to pay for that loan, which is Biafra land with our oil and gas, there is no railway line. <laughs> and you want me to be one Nigeria? <laughs> Take a Baba Wako, you must be an idiot. <laughs> On that note, we have come to the end of our program today. If you are a black person, you must repent from your stupidity. Your stupid ways is why you are the lowest of the low. Any society you go in the world, black people are at the bottom. Because of our, because of our, uh, we are very wicked in a special way. But I thank God for the life of those. That is why in IPOB you're a different person altogether. It's like a baptism. Once you join this noble family, you're a new person. You see things differently. I'm not saying that the devil will not operate within, uh, you know, the souls of a few people. Of course, it will. A prince will, a prince will operate in some souls. If you're weak, uh, I like it anyway. If you're weak, you fall apart, and then the movement becomes even more strong. And we keep going forward until your friends restored because we have no other purpose in life than to see the kingdom of God come down on this very earth and land of Biafra. I thank you all for listening this very evening. And once again, please go away from WhatsApp. Go into Signal for now. We are preparing our own platform. Go into Signal for now. And if you are a principal officer of state, try and get an iPhone if you can. They cannot hack into iPhone. Very important to use iPhone Messenger and FaceTime. Very, very important, please use iPhone. And as always, let the number, let the SIM card in your phone not be the same number for your signal, for your WhatsApp, or for any other thing that you're doing. They must be different. And don't give people your private line. If somebody wants to call you, ask them to call you on social media, um, um, using a social media app like Signal um, and, um, and what's it called, um, Telegram and all the rest of them. Do not use WhatsApp, please. They will track you. They will find it. They will arrest you. If you make direct calls from your phone and save people's name on your phone, believe you me, they will track you down. They will track you down. They will track you down, please. The number, the SIM card inside your phone cannot be the same number of your WhatsApp, cannot be the same number of your, of your signal, cannot be the same number of your Telegram. If they are, they can trace you easily. Very, very important. Nobody, not even your mother or your father, nobody should have your... Once you're a principal officer of state, nobody should have the number of your SIM card. They shouldn't. If there is no network, wait until there is network so you can talk. Or you send a voice note. 
avoid making direct calls and stop saving people's names by their name. Also, delete messages after sending. Delete it. Delete all messages after sending. Very, very important, please. I beg of you. Thank you very much for listening. And once again, allow me to remind you that I have the greatest love in my heart for each and every one of you that wants to be free. But for the Fulefus, Fulani, Janjaweed can kill them, I don't care. But for those of you chosen to do this very work, from, from the bottom of my heart, with all the love that I can muster from me from here, it is good evening.